Nothing else matters if you're not devoted to yourself. In this edition of Thursday's Thought, I am celebrating my 38th year on this planet by sharing my biggest insight of this past year. Tune in and learn the difference between commitment and devotion, the importance of establishing a true devotion to yourself, and three questions to ask in order to step into a state of true devotion. If you dig this podcast, stay in the loop by signing up for my weekly emails. Sign up today at rubyframon.com forward slash subscribe. And whether you're a loyal thought leader or a brand new listener, please take a moment to download a few episodes and drop a rating and review on iTunes. Now it is time to dive into devotion. Welcome to today's Thought Leader where I'm challenging you to rise up, speak up, and create a movement. I'm your host, Ruby Fremont, and I'm here as a catalyst for you, the new generation of thought leaders. Join me every week as I dive into raw and real conversations that will help you amplify your presence, influence, and impact. Hey, thought leaders, and welcome to another edition of Thursday's Thought. Now... It is my birthday week, so um, I'm both celebrating and reflecting very deeply on this past year. And in today's episode, I want to talk about my journey this past year and how nothing else matters if you're not devoted to yourself. So this week I celebrated my 38th birthday and yes, I have amazing genes. Thank you to my mom. And I'm really, oh, I feel like I'm going to get emotional this episode. I'm really feeling so excited to step into my 38th year. And if I rewind the clock, and go back to a year ago when I was stepping into my 37th year, things were very different. I didn't even post a picture of myself on my 37th birthday. And I realized that this year because nothing popped up in my memories online. And I remembered it was because of how I was feeling and what I was going through. So I share more in more depth about this in episode 124 and episode 126, which was a follow-up to episode 124. So if you haven't listened to episode 124 and episode 126, I highly recommend that you stop this one, stop this episode, go listen to 124, go listen to 126, and then come back to this episode. But in a nutshell, last year, 2018, was a difficult year for me because I was dealing with some health challenges, mostly mental health challenges. Now, for those of you who have been with me since the beginning, since episode one, you know my story. You know that I've um, dealt with clinical depression and severe anxiety my entire life. But something happened in 2018 that caused this to amplify in a way where I was not able to cope with what I was experiencing. And again, I talk about this in 124 and 126, but basically I got diagnosed with something called PMDD, which affects 8 to 9% of women. And for me, the way that it transpired is... 10 to 14 days of the month, I would be dealing with manic depression, um, which feels like you're out of control, severe, severe anxiety, um, to the point where my hands would shake uh, and where I would wake up in the middle of the night with an anxiety attack, Uh, brain fog, memory loss, and then the rest of the month I'd be fine. 
And so half the month I would spend feeling as if I wasn't myself, literally saying these were the words that I would say to my husband would be, I feel like I'm going crazy. I feel like I'm going insane. And it was a really difficult time for me to maneuver through because I had spent so much time on myself. You know, since 2012, I've really been hitting the pavement hard with this journey of personal and spiritual growth. I've been super, super dedicated to myself and committed to myself and committed to this journey. And yet none of my tools were working. And so like I share in episode 124 and 126, I started seeking other ways of doing this. But that's not what I want to talk about because I talk about that in episode 124 and 126. What I want to talk about is what shifted within me in order to to, um, go on this journey in my 37th year. Because really, I, I started it in my 37th year a year ago. And I'm still on it, but I'm on the, like the next, it feels like the next chapter of what this journey looks like. And so for my entire 37th year, I was devoted to myself. And that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about how nothing else matters if you're not devoted to yourself. See, I've been an entrepreneur for years. I, you know, some of you may not know, but my entrepreneurial spirit really began um, in when I was 21. And I had uh, a, an aesthetic salon. I was a trained esthetician, electrologist, and makeup artist. So I had my own business. And from there, I've, I've had other businesses, social media marketing, um, which is the business I was in before this and this. And I've always had this entrepreneurial spirit and I've always been very, very driven. You know, I, I get that gift from my dad, very driven, very ambitious. And so when I commit to a goal, I'll commit to a goal. I used to think that living a happy and successful life was about commitment and habits and following through. Like that's what I thought it was. I thought it was about having this level of commitment of just creating a goal and going after it. But through doing all of this deep inner work in the past year, I realized that what this is really about is is devotion. And my 37th year on this planet is where I really, truly practiced devotion to myself. So again, like I said, like I've always been driven and ambitious. Always, 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 always. I've, I've just something is a seed that was planted for my dad. I've seen him, you know, live his entire life being extremely driven, extremely ambitious. This came easy for me. But I didn't always feel passionate about what I was going after, nor did I always feel purposeful. I've accomplished a lot of great things in my life. I've, I've been a success at every single job and business that I've created but I wasn't always passionate about what I was doing and I didn't always feel purposeful. And often I would start things that feel super aligned, but soon I'll lose sight of purpose and alignment because I just became fixated on getting it done. Just became fixated on creating the accomplishments for myself. And maybe you can resonate with that. And maybe you're in that place right now where you're like, yeah, you know, I started this feeling super purposeful. And now I feel like I've lost my passion. I feel like I've lost sight of my purpose. I've I've lost sight of why I'm doing this. And now I'm just fucking fixated on the end goal, on the end result, whether it's a monetary goal in terms of how much you want to make per month or annually, whether it's, um, you know, an accolade that you want to achieve, becoming certified in something or speaking on X number of stages or writing your book. But what really matters is are you passionate about this? Is, is this aligned with your purpose? Does it feel purposeful? Like, why the fuck are you doing this? And I realized that all of these things that I've been challenging or been challenged or felt like I've been challenged with my mental health issues, my physical health issues, all of these things have a relationship with this drive that I have, this need that I have to succeed, 
this drive to create these external results and create these external accolades. It's all fucking connected, all of it. What was missing for me is having that devotion to myself. And when I say the word devotion, I want to be super clear on my definition of devotion. How I define devotion is that devotion is what happens when passion and purpose meet dedication. So when you feel passionate about something, when it, you feel like it aligns with your purpose or feels purposeful, and when you can dedicate yourself to it. So three questions to ask in order to really step into a state of devotion. One, am I passionate about this? Two, does this feel purposeful or does this feel aligned with my purpose? And three, am I willing to dedicate myself to this? And these were three questions that I wasn't aware that I was asking myself, but now looking back, I was like, wow, I was really asking myself these questions in my 37th year because I decided that enough was enough, that I both accept the diagnosis and I will overcome it. That just because I have been suffering from chronic, chronic, sometimes debilitating stomach issues almost half my life doesn't mean that I need to continue suffering from this. I will overcome this. And so it was my passion to overcome and create a better way of living for me. It was purposeful in that in order for me to lead my purpose, I need to feel good. You know, I am the foundation of everything that I'm creating. So I need to feel fucking amazing to be able to hold space for this mission and all the amazing, incredible leaders that I am working with. It is my divine responsibility to be at my best mentally, physically, emotionally. And then the third question, am I willing to de dedicate myself to this? Fuck yes. I had had enough. And so I committed. I created that dedication. I, I had the passion. I had the purpose. I became devoted to myself. And September 2018 to September 2019 has been that has been me sitting in numerous plant ceremonies, sitting with ayahuasca, sitting with combo medicine. Thank you, thank you, thank you, because this medicine has been so incredible for me. It's been a lot of solitude and deep reflection. It's been a lot of facing my own shadows and consciously choosing new ways of showing up to create new neural pathways for me to follow so that I don't continue to subject myself to this idea of suffering. It's been a true devotion to myself, which has also meant taking things off my plate. My 37th year, I removed my digital program, my one digital program that I created, that I invested a lot of money to create, that I spent a lot of fucking time to create, that I flew to New York City to film with my team. I took that off the table. I got rid of programs that I was running in order to create one solid program that felt super fucking aligned. I just started removing things from my plate so that I could continue to be devoted to myself. And the interesting thing is, and I share this in, in another episode, I'm going to link all these episodes in the show notes, but the interesting thing is, is I have also had my most financially successful year to date as an entrepreneur. And that feels incredible. And it's not because I've been trying to have my most successful year to date as an entrepreneur. No, far from it. I made peace with myself. I said, you know what? I am devoted to myself because I want to be where I need to be 
to support this cause, to lead this mission, to support these incredible leaders who are working with me. And yet, at the same time, I experienced my most successful year, which has felt amazing. And what I learned through that is that this mission of mine and this, this underlying message that I share over and over and over again is that the inner work leads to these results that we seek, right? We are the foundation for everything that we create. And so if we devote ourselves to ourselves, we will ultimately experience what we truly want to experience. It's not about consistency. It's about devotion. It's not about having the best strategies, whether it's in business or marketing. It's about devotion. It's not about your habits or your rituals. It's about devotion. It's not about doing things for the sake of doing or being something because you think people want you to be that way or doing things just to take things off a list. This is about devotion. It's about being devoted to your cause, being devoted to your growth, being devoted to your mission, to your vision, to your evolution, being devoted to all that is so meaningful to you. And that all begins with this devotion that you have to yourself. I just experienced the first month in Years, like I cannot tell you how long it's been, but the first month in years of not dealing with PMDD, of not experiencing depression, anxiety, memory loss, brain fog, the first full 30 days, a first 30 day moon cycle of not experiencing these things. And this is incredible. Like I share in episode 124, PMDD is not a hormonal thing. It is the way that your brain reacts to the natural fall, rise and fall in your hormones. It's a neurological issue that they have yet to find a cure for, that they have yet to have any sort of real remedy for. And here I am telling you that I just, you know, I don't want to jump ahead and say I healed this, but if I ask my heart and if I ask my inner knowing, I guess I healed this through all the devotion, through being devoted to myself, through being devoted to my growth, through being devoted to doing whatever I needed to do to heal, to, to being devoted to that process. And sure, for me, it was plant medicine and combo, for sure. But what you are devoted to doesn't have to look a certain way. It just matters that you are devoted to you. You are devoted to being the best version of yourself, that you are devoted to being in true alignment with your message, with your cause, with your mission, that you are devoted to being healthy, to taking care of yourself, to honoring your mind, body, and spirit. Because nothing else matters if you're not devoted to yourself. So as I sit here, my 38th birthday week, my 38th year on this incredible planet. I am filled with gratitude for another year. I am filled with gratitude for my strength and my resilience and my willingness to devote myself to myself in a society that wants us to prioritize everyone and everything before us, I am telling you that it is crucial to your mental, physical, emotional, spiritual well-being that you are devoted to yourself above all else because nothing else matters if you are not devoted to yourself. (sighs) 
So that's my share for you today. That's my Thursday's thought. It comes from the heart, as does everything. And I thought it would be cool to, to leave you with a question. And because it's my birthday week, you need to follow what I say. Because this would make me really happy, <laughs> number one. And number two, this is the birthday gift that I'm asking for. Okay, you cool? Okay, so in order to honor this birthday gift that I'm asking for, what I'm asking you to do is to answer this question, to send me a message and answer this question. What are you devoted to? What are you devoted to? And you can send me that message on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, at I am Ruby. Just send me the answer. What are you devoted to? Let me know. You listen to the episode and share what you're devoted to. What you're devoted to. I would love, love, love to hear from you. Thank you so much for joining me on another edition of Thursday's Thought on today's Thought Leader, where I am challenging you to rise up, speak up, and create a movement. If you dig this episode and you dig what this podcast is all about, be sure to download a few episodes and drop a rating and review on iTunes. And if you want to stay in the loop for future episodes, plus receive my weekly love punch emails, which are really fucking amazing, sign up today at www.rubyframon.com forward slash subscribe. And then make sure you check back on Monday for a new episode of today's Thought Leader featuring Louisa Duran. And let me tell you, she definitely brings the heat. In our conversation, Louisa shares how the idea of a safe space is less like a soft, cushiony room and more like getting shot with a shotgun to the face. I'm telling you, this is a conversation worth tuning into, especially with what's happening in today's world. Thank you so much, Thought Leaders, and I will check back in with you on Monday.